Hello. All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the demo recap of Sprint T. Sprint T. Sprint T. Sprint T. Sprint T. Damn. All right. Uh, this week was, or this sprint was a lot about refactoring. And so the majority of the stuff that we're going to show today is, uh, like, the majority of the work that happens today isn't really stuff that we would normally show um, or that sort of like demos very easily. Uh, but that being said, we still have some cool stuff to show from the sprint um, that I think will be fun to sort of look through. And uh, Casey, do you want to start with the query pop thing? Uh, yes, I do. I was actually going to pull up our old version so I could oh, wow. like make a comparison, <laughs> but that would take me uh, a second. Uh, works. So while we wait on that, uh, a bunch of the refin. Uh, Dustin, do you want to tell us a little bit about some of the refactoring that happened in FSI and otherwise? Yeah, totally. So um, a lot of the changes that I made are going to be uh, hopefully invisible from a user standpoint. But the idea is that we have a lot of data structures for our uh, model of what a data set is. Uh, and there's always been this thing throughout our code where we have different components like meta and the commit, uh, the structure, the body, et cetera. Um, but this has always existed in a very static sort of sense where everything that interacts with these components does so by name that you know you, you like know about ahead of time. So this code path is working on meta, et cetera, et cetera. Um, FSI has kind of surfaced this need to talk about components in a more like generic sense. So it's like, you know, for each file in this directory, I'm like mapping it to some behavior, you know, checking the status on each component. Uh, and the code got really complicated really fast because we didn't have a way to do that. So this refactoring recently added a dynamic interface to components that allows us to kind of be like, you know, for each component, check if it's modified, you know, or, or uh, you know, write it out to disk, uh, you know, when you're checking out, stuff like that. So um, yeah, that was a huge code cleanup. It actually added a lot of code, <laughs> uh, but hopefully the code that was added is going to be used a lot more in the future. So it's going to end up a uh, big net win. And uh, the, the algorithms are definitely a lot simpler. So that's good. Yeah, for that, uh, that took most of the screen to do. It's super exciting. I know it sounds really low level, but like the stuff that Dustin's been working on is like generalizing a pattern that we've basically hard coded. Um, it's really cool to see. And it's, it's going to set up the stage for some really nice stuff in the future. Um, yeah, we've got some really fun plans for forthcoming sprints on that. Um, yeah, Casey, you ready? I am ready. Okay, Amazing. so let me skirmish her. <laughs> don't know why I said that like that. Um, I don't, it seems like it's a little mad at me, so let's see if it works. Um, all right, there's some, some, screen some sharing privacy here. things that I have to say okay to. <laughs> oh, I, okay, yeah, yes, oh, yes, 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 I did, yeah. I did. Oh, I'm going to make me quit and restart. So okay. I'll be right back. Okay. You come back. I will be <laughs> done. Uh, I can demo uh, some of our log sync stuff, um, which I think will be fun. So I'm going to share my screen. Uh, share. Hopefully, I don't have to. I've been putting off the new update mainly because I'm afraid of all this privacy stuff. So, <laughs> so today, uh, Next sprint, you'll see this in uh, in a GUI form, but today we have to demo it for you using four terminals, which is more than what we would like. But to sort of explain things here, on the left side I have uh, one peer, and on the right side I have another. So these are two peers connected to a peer to, in a peer-to-peer -peer network. So if we look at the left, and I do query config get profile peer name. On the left, I am pearly purple chihuahua. Beautiful. Yeah, and and if I get uh, how do I, I can't like I have to move. Oh no, don't do that. Uh, it's visible. Yeah, I, I have to. Uh, I can't see it myself because there's stuff over there on the screen. <laughs> uh, if I do profile peer name over here, I can see rifle green Irish terrier. And uh, just to show that we're connected, if I do query peers list, I'm connected to pearly chihuahua. And I do query peers list, I'm connected to rifle green Irish terrier. Cool. And then one other thing that is worth noting is we've now sort of shipped a whole bunch of stuff into remotes that bring some of the logbook work that we've been doing up. And the purpose of this is to enable collaboration so that we can finally start to track when people are publishing stuff uh, back and forth. And so on this, in this one, I'm going to do query LS looking at this guy. And so we have this data set called great DJs, which I think is only one. <laughs> uh, and if I, this, this is the current directory that I look at. And if we do query log here, we'll see the first thing is the log command is actually looks a little different than it did before. Mm -hmm. Most notably, we have this new sort of storage local thing going on which I think is kind of interesting. And that points to, and we also have the sort of just act the size of the data set. 
And this is now actually being driven by this new logbook code that we landed this sprint. Uh, and so what this local means is on this, on, on this uh, rifle green Irish Terrier here, I actually have the data locally. But then if I go over to, uh, uh, to this other peer and I do query log, uh, and I previously added this data set once in the past, I can see that I have one of these is local, but two of them are remote and I no longer have these. And so this was a problem in the past where uh, we had an issue where if you didn't have a version, a prior version of a data set, you couldn't see the entire history. And so that's the first thing that we fixed. And it doesn't seem like that big a deal, but this is actually a huge deal from our perspective uh, for a reason that you'll see in a second. So if I now do vim body.csv and let's add another DJ to this. Anybody know the name of a good DJ? I'm writing them out in five. I mean, Lindsay Lohan is a DJ, right? What's, what's Lindsay Lohan's rating? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her a five. Um, and then I'm gonna do query save. And that's created a new version of the sense. So I do query log on this side, and we can see that we have uh, a new data set that was created just a second ago. And then if I do query log, and I have to actually list the data set that I want to log at this time, I can see over here that I only have three commits. But now what I can do is I can do query fetch. And query fetch is a new command that just says, is normally you'll just do query add, which would do both pull the logbook and the actual data. But for this example, we actually want to demonstrate just pulling the log. So query fetch in this example, I have a remote predefined. I should actually show that beforehand. If I do uh, query config get remotes, um, I can actually see that I've, I've created a remote. And this is actually the left, the key, this rifle before the colon is just a name that I've given. And I've said query config set remote rifle. And I've actually given the peer identifier of this peer on the network. And so under the hood, Query is going to figure out when I run query fetch that I actually mean, and I give it this remote flag, I actually want it to go over the peer-to-peer -peer network and fetch from that person specifically, this remote named rifle. So by doing this instantly, I have a new thing. And if I do query log, I can now see I have four, five more data sets. And I can see this new one is remote. I actually don't have it. So if I do query add with this thing, uh, and I, this time I have to give it a remote again of a rifle. Uh, oh, that doesn't work. Huh. Things I'm learning. Don't demo this live. Uh, and I added that. And that actually came over the peer to peer network, which is kind of fun. And I do query log. I can see that. Oh, no, that is not a remote. That is not a goal yet. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. But the most important thing we wanted to demo today was the fact that we can now actually move logs around and, and know about data sets that we don't have. It took us a long time to get to the point where that. This thing is remote, and, then this, and so what this means is we can now we have the sort of first foundation of collaboration, where this peer on the right can now publish data sets, and the peer on the left can be aware of them without having to grab all of the data, and that forms a sort of new foundation that we can use to better synchronize our work. Cool. Very cool. cool. Awesome. So exciting. Nice. I mean, the demo is for the logs, right? So we know that works. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's still some work to be done still with moving the versions around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Improve the logs. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Case. Cool. Know. Yeah. So uh, let's see if I can share it out. I can. Oh, great. Uh, so I always get a little turn, turn around. around on this here. So just as to Chris, um, who is not here, I'm going to be his uh, champion for this sprint uh, demo. Uh, did so much amazing work on Query Cloud to make it uh, more usable, more interesting to look at, and more functional. First, I just wanted to show what it looked like. Um, I, this is a local, I, I'm running it locally, so I don't actually have any data to work with, so it says no data sets, but you can see that it's sort of like this is the older version. This is the older version. Yeah. And this is the newer version. Woo! Woo! So we have um, this beautiful landing page shows some featured data sets and then um, public data sets that have been published recently, links to our um, desktop download page, which also I think landed. Did that land this sprint or was that last sprint? I think it was whatever. Whatever. <laughs> it's here. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah. But I think it was last sprint. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and if you check, look at one of these data sets, 
Um, we have this nice search bar at the top at all places. Mm -hmm. Each data set you look like will be like formatted in this way. Um, still to come components and history tabs, which Brennan's work on log sync and logs are really going to affect this page. Um, so we'll be able to show a full history of a data set without needing every version of the data set, which is huge. We also just wanted to show you this clone data set button. So you want this data, uh, you can, uh, Ooh, in order to up. get that data set, yeah, look at this beautiful pop up. In order to get that data set, you can copy or, wait, hold on, I can't see behind everybody's beautiful faces. Mm -hmm. um, you can copy this data set reference, open up Query Desktop, and add the data set using that reference. I actually have this data set, so I wonder if there's one I don't have. Let's just look at this one. So clone data set. You notice here there is an open in Query Desktop button. Uh, Query Desktop's like kind of a sprint behind on this. We will be implementing, mm. you click the open in desktop, open in Query Desktop button and it will open Query Desktop with all of the information you need populated. But just to show you right now what the flow is without that button, um, you copy the reference here, you come into Query Desktop, you're gonna add an existing desktop, or you're gonna add a, a data set that already exists. So put it, and you paste this reference in here and you add data set. I think this is a pretty big data set. Right. Yeah, and so now we have the history of this. We have, um, we have this data set. We also have it on our file system. So if you wanted to play with the data set yourself, so good. You, this, these are the actual raw files. And if you make any changes, then you can commit those changes here. So it's just like, the other side of the beautiful, the like nice flow that we want people to be able to experience when using Query. Uh, so, is there anything else about this? That's, uh, and also, we have that JSON viewer, which is new. Um, if you scroll down we, this oh, page, oh yes, nice. Yeah, this is much nicer. This is super nice. Yeah. Okay. So before yeah. we just like JSON just choked on the button, so that's fixed. Awesome. Um, how's search working? Super good. So if I were, for example, wanting to know all of V5's data sets. You know it. We know them. Awesome. That's so fun. <laughs> it's really fun to demo stuff by being like, does this work? <laughs> and it does. It's <laughs> great. Awesome. Great. OK, so um, Do you talk about I'm going to desktop? now talk about the work that I did this sprint. Uh, we made a decision uh, when we were first doing query desktop and this file system integration to have the files that show up on your system. Here, I'll show you right now. That these files that show up on your system to be body meta and schema.json. The reason we did that was we felt, um, it felt like data, people who use data understand what a schema is and that now we have a structure file that, here we let me, let me find something that has a, actually, why am I looking in the file system? I can actually just look in query. Uh, if we look at, no, dead. So if you look at this schema here, oh, how did I get into this state? Oh, because I have no commits? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So if you, we been, previously, we were just showing the schema as like a JSON, raw JSON. Mm -hmm. And now that we have this nice like viewer, the way that we have this nice viewer in um, for our standard for our metadata, we decided that we no longer felt like we needed to obscure structure or the structure JSON file from the user because we actually have this nice way for you to interact with it if you're not a person who understands or uh, understands or is comfortable working in JSON. The other thing that we noticed was that there were some configuration options that exist in structure that don't exist in schema, specifically for CSVs. So if we take a look at the CSV here, uh, there is this first row, even though our structure, um, even though query successfully detected that the structure 
contains a uh, contains columns with these titles, we actually don't have the configuration format configuration details to show the body in the correct way. And so we added the ability to give query some um, much needed format configuration details that the user can then control. Um, query can detect it for you, but if um, you want to, to give you more fine, finer grain control. So right now this header row is being repeated. If I go, this table can, can actually contains a header row, like we know it already contains a header row, it will display everything hey, properly. Hey, hey. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, let me, so, okay, so if you are a, let's see, let's create a new data set, and I'm just going to use this convenient body.csv file, and I am going to, let me make sure that, I'm going to do like a demo structure. I'm going to create this data set called demo structure, and let's give this a second. You can see that the, it's actually the same body, it's actually the same um, underlying data as the previous, uh, the previous data set that I just showed you, but query was able to detect all of the format configuration details and send it back to you. And then if you decide, or if you say, Hey, query, you were wrong. It's not, it doesn't actually contain a header row. You can make those, you can make those adjustments on your own. If you, can you make that adjustment before the first commit? Yeah, so you can make this adjustment and then you'll see that it no longer believes that the header row exists. You can also remove this file and you still can no. give query those instructions. Um, there won't be, a, so there won't be a schema that gets generated for you because you just removed it. <laughs> However, if you just leave this blank, you just you say, "Hey, query, we, I trust you to actually, you know, detect this for me." You can commit without the structure, and it will generate a correct structure for you. Awesome. So yeah, those are the those are the biggies there. If you if there are any users, one one thing that was important to us is that if there are any users who were using the previous version of Query Desktop where they were relying on schema. This actually gives us an easy way to transition those people because if you don't have a structure.json file, we still allow you to give format configuration options. So if you have, if you're a query user and you notice this problem where, oh my gosh, my my header row is being my, yeah, my header row is being repeated, now you can go go into query, just click header row true, click, you know, save the commit, and query will understand. You we'll mean? understand there's it's not going to break because you don't have a structure.json file. Um, yeah. Nice. Those are the things. That is so great. And so like now we can, we were getting a lot of this problem before where people couldn't actually even you did the screen that lets you set this configuration landed. Yes, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So awesome stuff. Yeah. Cool. Very neat. I think that kind of closes it out for the week or for the sprint. We had a, it was a really good sprint. We did a lot of refactoring. I think we're very excited for what's going to come up in the next little while. Every now and then we need to sort of take two weeks and just get our code ducks in a row. Uh, and so very much looking forward to uh, next sprint where we will hopefully be demoing even more new stuff. Yeah. In the meantime, if you have any questions, we still do calls on Mondays at two. Feel free to join them. And otherwise, we'll see you next demo video. Bye.